Hey everyone, in today's video we're going to take a look at the differences between running the Z1 Extreme and the 780M graphics drivers on the ROG Ally. You're going to see that yes, in some games you're going to get a performance boost, and in some cases quite a big performance boost, uh, but in other cases you're not going to see that much of a difference or it's actually going to lose your performance. So let's get into it. Alright, so as always, I'll show you how to install it and get it up and running. So best practice would actually be use DDU or Display Driver Uninstaller to uninstall the graphics drivers completely off of the ASUS ROG Ally. Now, without doing that though, you can just uninstall them or kind of install over them through the device manager. So doing that, you'll go into your C drive and delete the AMD folder. Uh, doing that, it won't mess anything up immediately or that's just kind of like where all the drivers get installed to. So then you'll download from this link here and I'll provide it in the description below as well. Uh, download the manual driver installed, not the auto detect install. And then what you're going to have to do is run that program and it'll install and then fail. It'll give you an error saying, oh yeah, we couldn't complete the install. Then you go to your device manager. The quickest way is to the start menu, uh, right click on the start icon and then, or the windows icon rather, and then go to device manager. And then once in there, go to display adapters. And then when you look at your display adapters, you're gonna to go to your AMD Radeon graphics, and then you will hit update driver, browse my computer for driver, and then let me pick from a list of drivers on my computer, say have disk. And then you're gonna browse and then go to this PC, C drive. And then you're gonna go into your AMD folder. And then within that, you're gonna find the uh, INF folder and then you'll just install it from there. So just kind of follow along the background and I'll leave the full on kind of background just playing in the footage there uh, or footage playing in the background, my apologies. <laughs> Okay, so I apologize for my kind of crude writings here, but I'll kind of walk you along through it. So what we're looking at here is Cyberpunk uh, running at the Steam Deck preset, FSR quality, 30 watts. This is the Z1 Extreme is the green highlighted versus the 780M drivers highlighted in red. So the top half will always be the Z1 Extreme that's signified with the green highlights and the bottom half will always be the 780M again highlighted with the red. You'll see 720p, 900p and 1080p. So I did three runs at each resolution for each uh, driver. So I did basically three, six, nine, and then doubled that and did 432 tests in total, I think it was, something like that, something ridiculous. But anyway, so we can see here that any, going in from the Z1 Extreme to the 780M and Cyberpunk 30 watt, we got a 3% gain in uh, 720p. And you'll see here that kind of most of the gains honestly were really seen in 720p. Uh, so you see we got a 3% average boost there for the FPS averages, but from 1% lows, uh, we did actually see an 18.7 increase there from 16 to uh, 19. So now going to, uh, da, 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 sorry, 15 watt, my apologies, uh, Z1 Extreme 780M, we did actually see a 41.5% increase from the 1% uh, lows there going to the 780M, and we did see similar increases to our FPS averages. Again, with the 720p being kind of the most where we saw those gains but we did see that the 0.1 percent lows and i did kind of miss that one there i do apologize but it's honestly it wasn't too far off from what we saw here it was a little bit higher uh, i apologize for that indiscrepancy i spent over 25 30 hours doing all these tests so i sincerely apologize um, I just kind of want to get the information out there just so you can make your informed decision. So anyway, going to Hitman 3, Dartmoor, Benchmark, Medium, FSR, Quality. We have the Z1 Extreme 780M drivers. Um, so going from negative 16% uh, there, we got from our 1% lows, but we actually did gain 4% uh, from our FPS average, interestingly enough. Uh, but that, again, that was only really at the 720p. Going to 1080p, we did actually see a pretty significant boost on the FPS average 
averages, but the 1% lows, the, again, they were higher on the Z1 extreme. Going to 15 watt, we could see the same thing. We got actually, sorry, not same thing. We got a significant boost at 6.5%, uh, going to the FPS average, and then 15% uh, boost going from the 1% lows on the Z1 extreme to the 780M drivers. And we can see that the boost here did actually kind of go again it was only really 720p that was really affected uh even the 1080p results here we got worse one percent and 0.1 percent lows compared to the z1 extreme so again for uh forza horizon 5 uh, we did see a 10.4% uh, difference, uh, negative 10.4% difference from 62 to uh, 57 FPS average there. Uh, and again, that was kind of felt more so across the board here. We can see it was a little less at uh, 720p there, but at 900p and then 1080p as well, it was felt more. Uh, the 1% lows, curiously, were about the same. The 0.1% lows were actually a little bit better overall, uh, significantly actually. Uh, on the 780M drivers for 720p and 900p, but for 1080p, they were only about two FPS higher. But we're looking at the 900p and the 720p, they were about, whew, geez, uh, 10 to 20 higher. Now, going to Forza Horizon 5 at 15 watts again, we can see here that it kind of flipped and we got uh, worse 0.1% lows, but the 1% lows were all pretty well in line with each other here. Uh, the FPS averages did kind of flip here and the 15 watt low averages were better on the Z1 Extreme. Uh, now going to Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, lowest settings, FSR 1, not FSR 2 quality at 30 watts. We could see that we actually did get a little bit of a boost here, but I didn't really, I mean, the the point one percent lows were actually significantly worse on the 780m drivers compared to the z1 extreme so but then you look at the one percent lows and they were a little bit better but the point one percent lows are going to be those like kind of hard seconds of stutters um so looking at this honestly for call of duty uh like we did get a significant fps boost in the uh, sorry, 15 watt compared to it. And then looking at 15 watt, for whatever reason, I was getting just abysmal 1% lows at 15 watt and 0.1% lows. So at 15 watt, in this case, the 780M did better. Now, going to Dirt 5, we honestly didn't see too much variation here. The 780M did perform a little bit worse than the overall averages, uh, but the 1% lows were kind of higher uh overall not terribly significant but by about one fps overall the 0.1 percent lows uh more so on the 900p were kind of the major outlier there everything else besides 1080p was about a couple fps off going to dirt 5 15 watt we can see here that it stayed about the same especially uh but we did get more performance out of 720p at 15 watt here that we did opposed to 780m drivers it all kind of stayed in line about 28 fps there now going to Sniper Elite uh, V2 high, no MSAA, 30 watt Z1 Extreme versus a 780M drivers. We got, uh, honestly, there wasn't really too much to write home about here. The performance was pretty well pretty well straight across the board honestly we got better one percent lows on the uh, 780m drivers for 900p and 720p but uh, i mean i don't know it's it's an older game so but you can see it kind of carried over to 15 watts here as well that we got the better one percent and 0.1 percent lows uh in the 720p uh but we did kind of drop off in 1080p there performance wise uh and then sniper elite 3 this is uh i can't remember the release if sniper elite v2 came out first and then sniper elite 3 or if they came out around the same time i believe they're probably based on the same engine but i did run this at ultra no msaa uh 30 watts z1 versus 780 and we can see here the performance was pretty well uh the same for the fps averages but then looking at the 720p performance looking at the 0.1% lows we got significantly higher 0.1% lows there um, but then going down to 1080p we got a slightly worse compared to the z1 extreme as, as well at the 900p there now going to 15 watts it's kind of mirrored there uh, except now we were getting worse performance in the 0.1% lows um, at the 7 or sorry we were still getting better my apologies but obviously we're getting lower uh, but the gap isn't honestly that large compared to uh, 
30 watt there sorry so i'll leave it at 15 watt here for a moment if you want to keep kind of take a look at that but there wasn't really too much interesting stuff going on here to be honest now we're going to red dead redemption 2 i uh for the settings i went to balanced and this is the first tick when it changes to balanced so 30 watts z1 extreme versus 780m there was not too much variation here the 0.1 percent lows were a little bit higher uh, 1080p significantly higher now going to 15 watt we can see that the 0.1 percent lows were significantly higher on the 780m drivers and the averages were about the same for the one percent lows and the fps average overall now going to dying light 2 medium direct x11 not direct x12 fsr balance 30 watts we can see that the one percent lows and the 0.1 percent lows are just abysmal across the board in this game honestly uh, i think it's probably more so to do with the benchmark itself i don't think the gameplay is as stuttery as this suggests but it is it was like an added on benchmark after release so i don't it wasn't really designed around it in in mind so take this with a grain of salt uh so performance was pretty well the same across the board honestly even for 15 watt there wasn't really too much variation the one percent lows were a little bit better at 1080p but nothing too much else wonderlands uh 30 so this is a uh, borderlands wonderlands tiny tina whatever it's called 30 watt uh we can see that the performance was actually quite a bit better on the 780m drivers so now we can see here that the older uh, unreal engine 3 title i believe this is or no this would be an unreal engine 4 title sorry uh borderlands 3 might be an unreal engine 3 if i recall um so looking at these we can see that for the older kind of unreal engine style games that the performance was actually better on the 780m drivers now going to 15 watts we can see that it kind of flipped and we did get better performance uh eh, pretty well across the the board on the z1 extreme drivers now going to borderlands this is kind of the clickbait 55 percent increase uh, from the z1 to 780m drivers we can see that yes for 720p we did get a 55 percent increase uh, from 40 to 63 fps but the one percent lows we got a negative 52 percent uh decrease so we got 24 fps on the one percent lows and 11.3 on uh 780m drivers now that did seem to be a little bit of an outlier but again these are three run averages so the 0.1 percent lows were also significantly worse here compared to the z1 extreme drivers so now moving to 15 watts we can still see that there is a 33.7 percent difference between 720p performance um, and we did actually get a 281 percent increase from uh 7.6 to 29 so we see here that it's kind of flipped at 15 watts and our uh, FPS averages and the 1% lows especially, we're actually doing a little bit better at 15 watts here. Uh, so now going to Gears 5, I didn't really do too much with this. There's not too much drama here with the uh, 780M. We did get worse 1.1% uh, lows, my apologies. And then for Gears 5, 15 watt, we can see that we actually did, again, 720p performance was significantly better, except the 0.1% lows were a little bit worse, but honestly not by much. But the 1% lows were higher, as well as the FPS average. Now going into 900p and 1080p, we can see the performance kind of leveled out, and we were getting about the same, but the 0.1% lows were a little bit worse, uh, significantly so at 1080p. So again, I just want to like kind of point out that all these tests that I've done were three run averages for each resolution. So that was three tests here, three tests here, another three, another three, another three, another three for every slide that you saw. Um, I have this all documented in my spreadsheet that I was doing all the testing for. Again, this took me probably about like 25 to 30 hours just for doing the benchmarks alone. Um, so this is probably one of the most or fairly most accurate uh benchmarks out here for the drivers for the z1 extreme versus the 780m um, i would suggest that if you're running the 780m drivers to drop your benchmark numbers in the comments and if you're running the z1 extreme uh, drop your benchmark numbers in the comments as well for these games or other games that have repeatable benchmarks that we can just go oh, okay yeah like this gets about this fps average or this about F the fps average um, as well i have been using msi afterburner as well 
well as RTSS alongside that. So if you're not familiar with that, that's RTSS is the like overlay system. Uh, so you can monitor things like your temperatures, your performance, your power that you're using, whatever. Uh, so with that, I use that to measure the FPS averages, the 0.1% lows and the 1% lows. So for some games, uh, some games will fade into black like quite often. So Red Dead Redemption 2 being one of them. So that if you do a benchmark with MSI Afterburner or whatever, with that starting at the very beginning and then finishing at the very end, those instances of the black screens that are the loading screens between each uh, little session that it does those will cause your results to be wildly inaccurate if you're using this uh, program or any uh, frame rate counting program like that so what you'll have to do is either start and stop it or do what i do and just limit it to the final section so i've for red dead redemption 2 specifically i limited that to the final section so it's not including the whole length of the benchmark um, i believe that's what a bunch of other people likely do but i don't ever hear it mentioned so again just a uh, uh, dying light 2 was one of them that did have black sections in between the benchmarks but it wasn't as significant as red dead redemption 2's uh loading sequences it was was more just like a transitionary scene so this can also be felt in the batman arkham knight benchmark as well but it's more brief so it's not as interruptive and it doesn't skew the results as much so the results with certain benchmarks are skewed using this program slightly but not greatly to really affect the overall fps average because it's only for about a second or two if that whereas the red dead redemption one i've seen it go for as about as long as like five to six seconds and that can skew it greatly because the fps counter will shoot up to above like 200 fps or so um, some games it will kind of limit the fps so you'll either get limited to 30 in those instances or it'll actually keep kind of running something and you'll be getting about the same fps that you were getting before so that's just kind of like a little bit into like the testing methodology and everything uh, if anybody was kind of curious about how i go about doing these things And yeah, I don't really want to make this video longer than it really needs to be. So there are benefits to running these drivers. So if you're into emulation and you're running Tears of the Kingdom, this will fix some up uh, some of the graphical glitches. I'm not going to say it'll fix everything because some of that is just kind of emulator related. Uh, but those kind of like black artifacting lines, I've not really noticed them in my short testing. I will be revisiting Tears of the Kingdom in its own dedicated video, especially now that we have these updated drivers. I will be doing comparisons running Z1 Extreme versus 788M uh, and we'll just kind of see the differences performance wise and image quality wise. And I'll be doing a more like kind of optimized setting. I'll be running it with the XG Mobile which honestly you'll see that there's not really going to be too much of a difference there doing that so let me know if you've been running the 780m drivers let me know what kind of games you've been playing and let me know what your experience has been like um, if you're running the z1 extreme drivers honestly i wouldn't really suggest going to 780m unless for a very specific use case such as tears of the kingdom or something like that but even then i would honestly just kind of wait and see if asus throws something together in the next couple of weeks and then go from there uh, they are going to update their graphics drivers at some point and they will have to but uh, when they do it uh, who knows what is another kind of curious thing is running the 6850 with these new updated drivers people are reporting uh, better FPS using the XG Mobile. So I will be visiting that in a different video uh, compared to my 3080, the 6850, and then I will now include 6850 with the updated drivers to see what kind of performance gains we're getting there. So if you're interested in that, I guess subscribe to the channel um, and then you can unsubscribe when I inevitably put that content out or whatever. Um, but yeah, beyond that, uh, thank you for my channel members as always. Always. Uh, we have Darkstar, Amoa, Rico1217, uh, oh man, Joey VR, uh, who else? And Roy Wayne, Watney, uh, Rustland. Um, sorry. So, again, if you're interested in some of the content, get subscribed. If not, no offense, none taken. Uh, as always, I hope you all have a great day. Thanks for watching. I really do appreciate it. So again, let me know in the comments below if you're running these new drivers and what your experience has been like. I'd really love to hear it. Thanks again and take care.